My name is Danica. I'm an associate editor at Book Riot, and today I want to talk about some of the books out this week on November 2nd. The first is A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. Robin Blythe has more than enough bother in his life. He's struggling to be a good older brother, a responsible employer, and the harried baronet of a seat gutted by his late parents' excesses. When an administrative mistake sees him named civil service liaison to a secret magical society, he discovers what's been operating beneath the unextraordinary reality he's always known. Now Robin must contend with the beauty and danger of magic, as well as an excruciating deadly curse and the alarming visions of the future that come with it. Not to mention Edwin, his cold and prickly counterpart in the bureaucracy, who clearly wishes Robin was anyone and anywhere else. Robin's predecessor has disappeared, and the mystery of what happened to him reveals unsettling truths. Truths about the oldest stories they've been told, about the land they live on and what binds it. Thrown together and facing unexpected dangers, Robin and Edwin discover a plot that threatens every magician in the British Isles, and a secret that more than one person has already died to keep. So this is being pitched as Red, White, and Royal Blue meets Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It's set in Edwardian England and explores a hidden world of magic, and it also has a steamy hate-to-love romance between Robin and Edwin, and this is the first book in a series. Next up is Blue Skinned Gods by S.J. Sindhu. In Tamil, India lives a boy with blue skin. His father sets up an ashram, and the family makes a living off the pilgrims who come to seek their child's blessings and miracles. They believe Kalki to be the tenth human incarnation of the Hindu god Vishnu. In Kalki's tenth year, he's confronted with three trials. They will test his power and prove his divine status. Soon, his father tells him his fame will spread worldwide. While he seems to pass the trials, Kalki begins to question his divinity. Over the next decade, his family unravels, and every relationship he relied on, father, mother, aunt, uncle, cousin, starts falling apart. Traveling from India to the underground rock scene in New York City, Blue Skin God explores ethnic, gender, and sexual identities, and spans continents and faiths in an expansive and heartfelt look at our globally interconnected world. So this is from the author of Marriage of a Thousand Lies. It's a story of family, identity, and finding her place in the world. Roxanne Gay calls it brilliant and beautifully written and says the richness of the story will grab hold of you and never let go. I just finished reading this one and I second that recommendation. It's really good. Then there's God of Mercy by Okizi Nwoka. In Inchulu, an Igbo village, the people's worship of their gods is absolute. Their adherence to tradition has allowed them to evade influences from colonialism and globalization, but the village is reckoning with changes, including a war between gods signaled by Ijoma, a girl who can fly. As tensions grow between Achulu and its neighboring colonized villages, Ijoma is forced into exile. Reckoning with her powers and exposed to the world beyond Achulu, she is imprisoned by a Christian church under the accusation of being a witch. Suffering through isolation, she comes to understand the truth of merciful love, reimagining the nature of tradition and cultural heritage, and establishing a folklore of the uncolonized. God of Mercy is is a novel about wrestling with gods, confronting demons, and understanding one's true purpose. This debut novel is being called Homegoing Meets Black Leopard Red Wolf. It explores colonization, family, religion, and forgiveness. It's inspired by Igbo stories, and the unique writing style echoes the cadence of the Igbo language. Then I have The Donut Trap by Julia Chu. Jasmine Tran has landed herself behind bars maple bars, that is. With no boyfriend or job prospects, Jasmine returns home to work at her parents' donut shop. She quickly loses herself in a cyclical routine of donuts, Netflix, and sleep. She wants to break free of her daily grind, but when a hike in rent threatens the survival of the shop, her parents rely on her more than ever. Help comes in the form of an old college crush, Alex. Not only is he successful and easy on the eyes, to her parents' delight, he's also Chinese. He is everything she should wish for, until a disastrous dinner reveals Alex isn't as perfect as she thinks. Worse, he doesn't think she's perfect either. With both sets of parents against their relationship, a family legacy about to shut down, and the reappearance of an old high school flame, Jasmine must scheme to find a solution that will satisfy her family's expectations and get her out of the donut trap once and for all. So this shouldn't be confused with Donut Fall in Love by Jackie Lau, which came out last week. This romance debut is supposed to be a mix of Kim's Convenience and, frankly, 
Madly in Love by David Yoon. It's equal parts about the romance as it is about her fraught relationship with her family, as well as Jasmine's search for her independence and her own identity after graduation. Then I have Margot Mertz Takes It Down by Carrie McCrossan and Ian McQuethy. Margot Mertz is a secret sleuth. Okay, not really. But she does run an internet cleanup service, helping teachers and students alike clear their internet presence of anything they don't want anyone else to see. From secret embarrassing DMs to viral videos and more, Margot cleans it all. After her parents foolishly lost her college fund, this is the only way she can make it to Stanford. But when a fellow student comes to her asking to take down a website that is gathering nude pics of other girls at Roosevelt High School, things get personal. Margot must delve into the depths of the school to find the culprit. The seedy underbelly of Roosevelt High is not unfamiliar to Margot, but somehow this case is stumping her at every turn, until she figures that the only way to reach her suspects is to get close to perfect boy Avery Green. His access to every club, volunteer opportunity, sports team, and popular party is key to her solving her case. When the case takes a shocking turn, though, Margot's ready to burn the whole world down. No one targets the Roosevelt High girls or Margot's watch. So this is a feminist YA novel for fans of Veronica Mars and Moxie. It's a fast-paced mystery with big stakes, as well as the snarky humor you'd expect from the Veronica Mars comparison, which comes out in frequent footnotes. Margot is a flawed, unique character that readers will either hate or love. Finally, I have The Perishing by Natasha Dion. Lou, a young black woman, wakes up in an alley in 1930s Los Angeles, nearly naked and with no memory of how she got there or where she's from. Only a fleeting sense that this isn't the first time she's found herself in similar circumstances. Taken in by a caring foster family, Lou dedicates herself to her education while trying to put her mysterious origins behind her. She'll go on to become the first black female journalist at the Los Angeles Times, but Lou's extraordinary life is about to become even more remarkable. When she befriends a firefighter at a downtown boxing gym, Lou is shocked that although she has no memory of ever meeting him before, she's been drawing his face since her days in foster care, increasingly certain that their paths have crossed before, perhaps in a previous life, and coupled with unexpected flashes from different times that have been haunting her dreams, Lou begins to believe she might be an immortal, sent to this place in time for a very important reason, one that only others like her will be able to explain. Relying on her journalistic training and help from her friends, Lou sets out to investigate the mystery of her existence, and makes sense of the the jumble of lifetimes calling to her throughout the ages before time runs out for good. From the author of Grace, which was a New York Times best book of the year, The Perishing is set in Depression-era Los Angeles and explores racism, poverty, and impending war. This is an ambitious and philosophical story that brings the setting to life. It's more historical fiction than speculative, despite the premise. Those are all the books that I have for you this week. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in any of these or if there's another book out this week on your TBR. And if you've watched all the way to the end, please leave me a donut emoji for the donut trap. And until next time, happy reading!